Hello and welcome to this video series on HTML for beginners. In this video, we'll be showing you a few different ways to show the background of your web pages. And as far as I know, there are only four ways that we can have the background of your web pages being shown off. Uh, one, the easiest basically, is to do nothing. Just leave it plain white. And but where's the fun at in having a plain old white background? Now, number two, well, we can just change the color of the background. Again, it's ranking right up there in the realms of being pretty easy to do this. And again, we're going to go over all the details on these here in just a sec. Uh, the next one would be adding an image to the background. And there's a couple of ways we can do this too, not so much as adding an image, but uh, once we've added the image, we can either have the image uh, remain stationary in one place as the rest of the web page scrolls if it's long enough to scroll uh, or we can have the image scroll along with the web page and the other idea is to add what they call an edge to the background now this is similar to adding an image but the edge is usually on just one side of the web page for example, let's say if you've got a, uh, a visitor to your web page has a monitor of 800 pixels wide which is kind of sort of basically what it is, 800 by 600, and the web page is, say, 600 uh, pixels wide, and it's centered, well, the image will take up 100 on the left and 100 on the right, and the edge will just, say, be um, 100 on the left, and then there's just going to be white on the right-hand side. Well, you'll see what I mean whenever we get to that. Now, let's go ahead, then, and get the ball rolling and open up our web pages that we've been working on in the previous videos, and let's start messing around with our backgrounds. Now, what I thought would be a great idea would be to go ahead and have a separate web page for each one of the backgrounds we're going to be creating here so you can more easily look back on them in the future to use them as a guide or a reference point to kind of remind you how you created this particular background or added that particular background to this particular page. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and open up our folder and add three more pages here, uh, basically just copying and pasting this three more times. So we have one for the plain Jane White, we got one for the color, we got one for the image, and we got one for the edge. So I'm just going to right click and then left click on copy, then right click and paste, right click and paste, right click and paste. Now on this one here we're going to re re just leave it alone and because that will represent our white, our plain as it is straight out of the box uh, web page. This one we're going to change to color and just select it then right click come down here to rename and then left click on that and then I'm just going to highlight that part, delete it so that it's just like this one here except here at the end I'm going to put an underscore which is the shift key and the minus key let me show you which one I'm talking about here. On our keyboard, it's this guy right here. If you just hold your shift key down here or here and then click on that, that's going to give you an underscore just like here. i got to reselect that. And then we're just going to type in color. Now I'm going to go ahead and do the other two here real quick. I'll be right back. And G E. Okay, so now that I've got one for the color, got one for the image, and got one for the edge style background. Now then let's go ahead and open this one up here. Right click and open with Firefox. And yippee, yay, this is our uh, home page, I'm sorry, the first page, the plain one, that's what I'm trying to say. And since we're dealing with colors, I wanted to point out a web page or website that would definitely come in real handy. If you typed in HTML colors into your Google search, this one would be one of the first ones that come up. Actually, anything that you refer to or, or are searching for using Google that is referring to HTML coding, colors, um, text, fonts, whatever, and if you see a, re, uh, a result come up with this in the name, W3 Schools, check it out because this is an awesome resource for anything HTML. I mean, you can just see over here, they're all very good. Actually, W3 Schools is pretty good for anything relating to the Internet, the web page, whether it's uh, HTML, PHP, blah, 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 blah. Check it out when you get a chance to and have some time on your hands because you're going to get into this really quick. But I'm going to get back to this here in just a second when we get to our colors. If you scroll down the page here a little bit, you'll see a whole mess of different colors. And what are these numbers off to the side here? Well, I'll get to that in just a sec. 
This is the first page, and we're going to leave that one alone. That's our white one. I'm going to put the other three right next to it here onto the right. So let's get on back to our folder and right click. Open with front page, bada bing, bada boom. Now this is again plain Jane, but we're going to go ahead and change this by opening it up with our notepad so we can edit it. Open with notepad, here we go. Oh yeah, that's all that meta stuff we had in our prior video, so I'll just leave that alone for now. Because so all we're going to be dealing with right now is this first body tag, the opening body tag. Just click in here between the Y and that ending angle bracket, and then hit your space bar, and type in BG for background, I would imagine. No space, C-O-L-O-R for background color, equals, again, no space there. Then you want the double quotes, and if you're not sure where the heck that is, that's your holding your shift key down and hitting this guy right here because that's your single quote here on the bottom and this is your double quote. So we want the double quote out of here. We want the double quote and then we want the before I get into the hexadecimal, because that's what they call these things over here on this web page is hexadecimal codes. They've got the uh, pound sign, as they call it across the pond. I call it the number symbol, whatever. Uh, but you got the pound sign, then these six digits, uh, letters and numbers, that refer or tell the browser what color to, to plaster up in its place. Now then, if you scroll down here, you don't see the pound sign here, but just to be on the safe side, put the pound sign in front of any hexadecimal code you're going to be using. Now then, another way you can do this is with some of these primary colors, red, green, blue, yellow, okay, maybe not so much yellow, brown, what you can do is just type the actual word in. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. Just type in um, blue and then close off that quote. Let's save this and then head on back over to our web page here and then hit the reload key. Now then this should change right. Okay. Now if for some reason this did not change or reload the page to whatever you currently saved it to, a little trick for those Mozilla uh, browser users, that's Netscape and Firefox, you can click on this while holding down your shift key. Internet Explorer users, same thing, only the control key. This is your control key, that's your shift key. Control key, shift key. So anytime I'm talking about a shortcut, uh, a keyboard shortcut where you hold on the control key, well, I'm talking about this cat here, or this one here. Let me make this a little bit smaller so you can see what I'm talking about here. This guy here, or this guy here. Like for example, if you hold this down while uh, pressing the letter A, that's going to select all everything in whatever you've got your cursor in. Uh, Control S will save it. Control Z will undo whatever you just did. Control X is going to cut. Control C is going to copy. Control V is going to paste. These are just some of the easier ones that I can remember anyway. So let's get that guy out of here. So anyway, okay, so that being said, let's head on back over here and let's put in a hexadecimal code instead of the actual word blue. Well, one other thing too while I'm on the topic here, especially using the blue as an example, for some reason search engines, at least the ways they did in the past, I'm not sure if this is still the case, but I want to alert you to it just in case, is that they some unscrupulous people have what they call keyword spammed their word or their uh, web pages by um, let's say my web page deals with gardening hose or gardening tools to be more politically correct and if I were to have a white background on my web page which 99% of them are and I had text that was also white and I just put all over the place gardening tools gardening tools gardening tools uh, in the color white then it would be invisible naturally because white text on white background you can't see it but the search engines they can and they would see that as keyword spamming and how they would notice that or how they would uh, how they've kind of picked up on that they've added to their algorithm without getting too technical because by all means that's way beyond my pay grade if you have a background color 
in this case blue, with the same hexadecimal code as your text. If you've got, say, headers or H1 or H2 tag text that's the same color, even though you can see that because you've got a white background, but your background, the background I'm talking about, uh, is the same color, then the uh, search engines may take that as an attempt to keyword spam or to uh, be black hat, as they call it, and would never index your page, quite possibly penalize you henceforth from now on. So we don't want to do that. Just be aware to avoid having a same hexadecimal color of your background as any text you have on your web page. Okay, so just be alerted to that. Just wanted to bring that up. Okay, so anywho, let's go on over here and get a hexadecimal code. Oh, let's keep it simple, shall we? Uh, let's just copy. Okay, this is black. We don't want black because well, we got black text. Um, well, this is kind of sort of blue. Let's go ahead and just copy this over. Uh, right click and copy and go back to our text editor that's already highlighted make sure that the work is done in between the two double quotes there right click and paste control s as you can see there's six digits here yeah red green blue yeah and that has so that's that's a little breakdown of what these are this these two digits refers to some part of the red these two digits refer to some part of the green and these two digits refer to some part of the blue okay enough about that let's control s this guy and head on back over to our browser and this page here and we'll see if the color blue changes from the word blue to the hexadecimal code that i just put in there and it did exactly the same okay so just so we can make our point clear, let's change this color altogether uh, to what? Let's go with green. So we'll just copy this hexadecimal code, copy, and paste. Oops, don't want all that space in there. And then Control S, come back to the browser, come back to this page, reload it, green. Eww. Okay, yep, that's very green. So that is basically a quick rundown of the changing the color. Now then let's go ahead and jump into changing the background image by adding an image wrap. And we'll do this in video 4B. So come on back and watch us add images to our background.